Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church based in New Prague, Minnesota. My name is Angela Schambauer, and I am the video production coordinator here at Holy Trinity. We are happy to have you joining us online this morning. As we gather here online, we have fellow community members simultaneously gathering in person. And even though we are worshiping in different ways, we are still together as one community, and each form of worship is just as valid as the next. So thank you for choosing to make church a priority this morning. Today we close out our sermon series on the Ten Commandments as Pastor Alicia touches on the Ninth and the Tenth Commandment. So we begin this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from John, the 18th chapter. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief of priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into this world to testify the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is the truth? The word of the Lord. Well, it's about that time of the year when we may begin asking loved ones, What would you like for Christmas? You know, it was a few weeks ago, our daughters got their hands on an Amazon gift toy magazine. I think there are about five items that haven't been circled with a big green, jungle green crayon. How about you? What do you want for Christmas? If you had a big jungle green crayon, what would you circle? What is it that you want? What magazine might you page through? Well, it was maybe a week or so ago that our daughter then asked me, Mommy, what do you want for Christmas? And I thought about it a bit and I set my coffee down on the end table and I looked at her with a big smile and I said, Sweetheart, I just want time away with our family. And her response, uh, mom, I can't give you that. <laughs> well, it's also the time of the year when streaming services like Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus, so on and so forth, when their top 10 list of shows starts to change a little bit, we start to see titles like Christmas Chronicles 15 or 32 Christmas Wishes, or the 50th Christmas Miracle. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean. And Pastor Ben may be a little bit less enthusiastic about these titles showing up than I am, but he loves me, so we might get one or two in before Christmas in the next six weeks. But there is something for these shows to show up, or these movies to show up in the top 10, there's something about them that captivates people's attention to want to watch, something they resonate with. And as we think about these storylines, I think each of these stories captures some kind of deep desire or longing in the main character. I think it's either usually a story about an estranged connection within a family that's restored, or a moment when a struggling marriage regains new life, or someone, an individual who feels alone and then finds a partner. Typically, the beginning of the movie, we meet the main character who has some deep heart longing that's relational, that is met by the end after a period of waiting. Well, this is soon the season of longing and waiting and yearning for that which we don't have, for hoping for things or relationships. But it's not yet Christmas, it's not yet Advent, so why are we talking about these longings or wantings or desires today? Well, today we are finishing our Ten Commandment worship series. 
You might say we've only had, this is our ninth week. Well, yes, that's true. So we are finishing our 10 commandments today, putting the ninth and the 10th commandment together into one because they both deal with coveting or desiring or longing for something or someone. Well, I wanna start by just talking about one word. I love diving into individual words. And you may or may not know this, but the Ten Commandments show up twice in the Bible. The first set comes in the book of Exodus, and the second set comes in the book of Deuteronomy. And as we focus on this one word of coveting today, when we look at Exodus, the word covet comes up twice. And it's the same Hebrew word as we look at it each time. It's this word shamar. And as we look at the definition of this particular Hebrew word, it means to desire, take pleasure in, or to delight in. This verb has the sense of our mind wanting and ultimately typically being led to taking. Now, if we only looked at this word covet in Exodus, we might be able to justify or think of coveting uh, simply as when our minds, actions of wanting something, lead us to take action and, and take something. But Deuteronomy doesn't allow for that kind of thinking. When we look in the book of Deuteronomy, there are, again, two, wor two words of coveting, but this time it's not the same word both times. First, it is that same word from Exodus, but second, we also get a different word. And this word is avar. And avar means to crave to long or to lust after. As I look at these two words, it sounds to me like that second word is focused on the mind. So I think from these two passages and studying these words, I think we can understand the sin of coveting to involve both the mind and any actions which may follow. Now I'll be honest, I think it can be fun I think it can be fun to come up with Christmas lists. I have fond memories of paging through, I think it was a big J.C. Penny catalog when I was a kid and doing the same thing our kids have done. And it can be captivating, I already admitted, to watch some Christmas stories when there's some deep longing from someone, a period of waiting, and then ultimately that, ultimately that longing happens. It's restored or reconciled. I also think it's really healthy to seek continuous improvement in our life. It's helpful to anticipate or hope for better days when we're having really difficult ones. I think it's also smart to have a growth mindset and natural to long for things that you wish you had. But today we're talking about the difference between yearning and hoping and ultimately coveting. When desire, craving, longing, and lusting turn sour. We often think about kind of a simple way of defining sin as something that comes between you and another person or you and God or me and another person and me and God. And coveting and mind and actually and action certainly does both. It certainly causes pain in relationships with other people and with God. Whenever we're thinking about a Bible passage, I always love to look back into the Bible and see how might the Bible itself dig deeper and give us examples of what that looks like. And there are a few that might come to mind for you today as we think about this word coveting and a few that come to mind for me also. The first story that comes to mind first uh, is the one we often talk about in our new member gathering. That is the story of Adam and Eve. It's one, if we're familiar with the Bible, that might be the story we're most familiar with. It's this great story of creation, right? Where God created this beautiful garden of abundance, of plenty. And put Adam and Eve in, in the garden to not only live, but enjoy. And they were invited to enjoy everything that they had, everything they could see, except for one. There was one tree that belonged to God. Well, as we read in Genesis 3, it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the tree, and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired, 
to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. This word to be desired is the same word coveted. It's that same Hebrew word. You see, she desired and coveted and she took it. She took what was for God. She wanted to have more and she took it. She wanted to have more and she took what was intended for someone else. In a sense, you could say she stole it. But the sin didn't start with the action of stealing. The sin started in her mind with desiring or coveting. Well, that might be one of the most famous examples that we know of coveting or wanting something that wasn't for us. But another that might come quickly to mind is another famous character from the Old Testament, King David. King David's story comes in 2 Samuel chapter 11. And when we hear about King David, we also know King David had quite uh, abundance himself as a king. But we read in chapter 11 that David had just sent the kings out to battle. And in verse 2, it says, It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house. He saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. It's kind of a similar story to Adam and Eve, actually. David had a lot. He coveted someone, this time not something. He took what was for Uriah. He wanted to have more and he took it. He wanted to have more and took who was intended for someone else. David committed adultery. The story goes on that he kills Uriah. Bathsheba's husband. So David also committed murder. So the sin escalated. But the sin didn't start with this action of adultery or murder. The sin began in David's mind with coveting or desiring. So what's the difference between healthy anticipation or hope or longing versus coveting. When is it natural and normal to want and when is it a sin that God warns against today? Well, as we wrap up this sermon series on the Ten Commandments, I have to tell you I was particularly caught by a writing by uh, Professor Patrick Miller. He was a professor, an Old Testament professor at Princeton, and he writes about how the Tenth Commandment and the First Commandment are connected. And I think that has a response or an answer to that differentiation today when we're wondering what is it an okay wanting and when does it become a warned sin? So Professor Patrick Miller talks about how the 10th commandment and the first commandment are connected. He talks about how the first commandment is about love of God and the 10th commandment ends talking about how we love our neighbor how best to love our neighbor. But I believe he explains it similar to this. The first commandment is about loving God first. And when we love or trust something or someone more than God, then we are coveting and breaking the commandment. I'm summarizing or paraphrasing here, but he connects the 10th and the 1st commandments, talking about how the 1st commandment is about having no other gods, and Luther explained it as fearing and loving God more than anyone else. And the 9th and 10th commandment talk about, I think, some of the things that we might be tempted to make 
as gods or things that we put before God. It might be money or property, a relationship or work. Things that we want, that we don't have, that we put our trust in. Patrick Miller says this quote, he says, the root of human conflict is found in the desire for what one does not have. And I might say it even further saying, <laughs> the root of human conflict is found in the desire for what one does not have that is intended to be for someone else. In Martin Luther's treatise on good works, he writes this. He says, a man is generous because he trusts God and never doubts, but that he will always have enough. In contrast, a man is covetous and anxious because he does not trust God. Adam and Eve had, Adam and Eve had everything that they needed, but they coveted for more. David was king on top of the world and he had plenty, but he coveted for more. And their coveting led to the snowball of sin that began in their mind. Well, as we talked about before, the ninth and 10th commandment connect to the first. They warn us about coveting and invite us to live trusting that God will provide for us. It reminds us not to try to be our own God or trust in our own gods, but instead to trust in the one true God. You know, Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer and told us to pray it, saying, give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread. In the small catechism, Luther explains that this means everything we need to nourish our bodies. We're invited in this prayer that to really believe that God will provide what is necessary and to live believing God will. You see, the opposite of coveting isn't having everything we want. The opposite of coveting is trusting in God that you won't lack what you need. It's resting in God, trusting that just like God takes care of the lilies and the sparrows, God will surely take care of us too. Or like Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want, or I shall not lack. Well, as we look to Advent and Christmas, as we tiptoe towards these seasons of hope, of yearning, of wanting, of waiting, may we first rest and trust that God will give us what we need. So none of us are in need. May we take our jungle green crayons <laughs> and first, before we circle anything we want for Christmas, circle first and foremost, God. May we circle in that big green crayon the gift of grace that we need for our restless and wandering hearts and minds. And may we then be at peace, trusting that God will not only give us our daily bread, but also new mercy every morning. So that's how we can honor the first and the last commandments. By putting our love and our trust in God. Amen.
Our Father, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Taylor, and on behalf of all of the staff here at Holy Trinity, I'd like to thank you for joining us for worship. Here at Holy Trinity, it's our mission to share God's love with all people from one generation to the next. Well, this week we are celebrating Thanksgiving. It also means the almost the beginning of Advent, so this is the last Sunday before Advent starts. Now I have to admit, Advent is my favorite season doesn't love all of those Christmas carols and the, the giving and all of that fun stuff and of course the biggest birthday party of the year coming up at Christmas. So I want to remind you that if you do have any faith formation students that typically attend Wednesday evening programs this week, the week of Thanksgiving, there are no faith formation uh, programs. Now speaking of Advent, you should or shortly be receiving your Advent magazine. Now this Advent magazine contains Bible verses, it contains scripture readings for you to do daily during Advent. Now if you have your Advent log from last year, it's a great time to get it out, dust it off, decorate it if you'd like. But if you don't have one, you can pick one up before or after worship on Sunday or Wednesdays, or you can stop by the office and visit Jamie and she can get you one. That Advent log will also come with four tea lights, and so you can light a candle each week as you progress through Advent. Now we do have some worship changes or schedule changes uh, coming during Advent. I want to point out that instead of just regular plain old worship, on December 15th, that is our early family Christmas program. So if you've never participated, uh, it is amazing. The children get dressed up in costumes, they sing traditional songs, and they tell this Christmas story as only children can do. The following week, on Wednesday, December 22nd, we're having a blue Christmas service. Now this is also known as the service of the longest night. Um, and so it, it is more of a somber service. So again, um, just like this Wednesday, there will be no faith formation on December 22nd or the 29th of December for that matter. So I wanted to point out those two services that will be a little bit different than our traditional services, both happening on Wednesdays. Now Christmas Eve, I know it's like not even Thanksgiving and she's already talking about Christmas. But, hey, I've been playing Christmas songs since um, like November 2nd, so <laughs> I love Christmas. So I wanted to tell you about our Christmas Eve services, just so you can make plans with other relatives and make worship a priority. So we're having our Christmas Eve services at 2, 4, and 10 p.m. So those are for in-person worship only. Now, if you are an online viewer, we are going to be having a special online Christmas service at 6 p.m. So that's going to premiere at 6 p.m. And so if you're not in New Prague or uh, traditionally worship with this online, you can join us at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Now I do want to announce that also on December 26th and 29th, we will be having online worship only. So that's that week between Christmas and New Year's, and we're going to uh, do online worship only. Now for all of the um, other information that might be happening around Holy Trinity, you can check out our newsletter, HCOC Chronicles. You can find that at our website, holytrinityonline.org. And you may have remembered that Rose Fife is moving. We are so sad, but I want to let you know that the HTL Chronicles are living on. And so there's a new HTLC Chronicles article, and I invite you to read that on our website or the newsletter. And lastly, I'd like to remind you how you can give your offering. You can mail it into the church office, and Jamie will retrieve it daily. Don't have to worry about any sort of security issues there. You can download the PDF, that is the Simply Giving PDF, and you can um, choose whether you want it 
withdrawn from a checking account, a savings account, and determine um, the frequency and the amount. Lastly, you can do the Bank of Faith app, and that's on your phone. You download it either from the Google Play Store or the uh, App Store from Apple and uh, set up your donations that way. Thanks for joining us again this week. I'm so excited that you joined us. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus.